Welcome to Mikon's hardware. Today I have got Xeon EFI 2667 V2 test results for you. And the CPU will be compared to such popular options such as Xeon EFI 2690 V3 and Intel Core i5-10400. But first, let's take a look at the technical specification of Xeon EFI 2667 V2 and figure out why it is such an interesting option for the X79 or LJ2011 platform. So, Xeon EFI 2667 V2 packs 8 cores, 16 threads, memory supported up to DDR3-1866. Unfortunately, DDR3-2133 is not possible with this CPU. The core frequency stays between 3.6 and 4.0 GHz, depends on the load. The CPU also comes with a 30 MB of cache and 22 nm light topography. According to the specification, the CPU comes with a 130 W TDP. As you can see, this unique CPU is able to boost up to 4 GHz with no overclocking and it uses the old and aging X79 or LJ2011 platform. Now I'm going to compare it with EFI 2690 V3 which comes with 12 cores, 24 threads, DDR4-2133, 3.5 GHz on all 12 cores with the Turbo Boost Unlock, 25 MB of cache, the same 22 nm tech process and 135 watts according to the Intel specification. Core i5-10400 is the newest and the simplest CPU out of the three. It comes with just 6 cores, 12 threads, memory can be overclocked up to DDR4-3200 and higher if you use an overclockable chipset, such as P560, Z490 or Z590. On the other chipsets, the memory speed will be limited to DDR4-2666. CPU core frequency stays between 4.0 and 4.3 GHz, depends on the load. And the CPU comes with just 12 MB of cache. Much newer Core R5-10400 is produced using 14 nm lithography. And according to the Intel specification, it comes with just 65W TDP. So these three CPUs are rather different, and because of the price difference, it might be not a fair comparison to EFI 2667 V2, but it is not about fairness, it's about the X79 platform and if X79 users shall upgrade to EFI 2667 V2 or just replace entire motherboard, CPU and memory package. It will also demonstrate if it makes any sense to switch from X79 to X99 or you need somehow a bigger jump. For this test I have used the following configuration. As usual I have my AMD RX 6800 XT graphics card. For EFI 2667 V2 I have Quanon G X79 Green version 2.49 PC motherboard and 4 sticks 8GB each Corsair DDR3-1866. With the Xeon EFI 2690 V3, I have used Quanon GX99 TF motherboard, but this one is version 2.0. 4 sticks, 8GB each, Samsung ECC registered memory, DDR4-2133. And Core i5-10400 was tested on MSI B560M Pro VDH motherboard with 4 sticks, 8GB each, G-Skill DDR4-3200 CL14. The rest of the components were equal between all of the three CPUs except of the CPU cooler. Unfortunately, Noctua and HD15 CPU cooler which I use with my Xeon CPUs is just too big to be mounted on MSI B560M motherboard. That's why with Core i5-10400 I have used Cooler Master Hyper Evo 212 version 2. Even though this CPU cooler is not as capable as Noctua and HD15, it did not affect Core i5-10400 performance in any way. And a few final notes before I go into the test results. First of all, it is very sad, but I was not able to find a compatible BIOS with RAM timings for my Huanan GX79 version 249 PC. I have tested multiple different BIOS options, but none of them worked. That's why I was forced to use the program called System Info Viewer or SIV to tighten memory timings under Windows. This came with the caveat that I was not able to tighten the primary CL timing, but the rest of the timings were tightened to improve the memory performance and reduce the memory latency. The next one is about Xeon EFI 2690 V3. Some of you might wonder why I did not use my G-Skill DDR4 3200 modules with EFI 2690 V3, and this is because two of my modules are no longer working with X99 motherboards from China. I am not sure why it is so, but after I have tried to overclock two of my modules to DDR4 3800 with 1.4 voltage, 
these two modules stopped working on the X99 motherboards. All of them are still working perfectly fine on MSI B560 and other LG1200 motherboards, but for some reason the system doesn't boot if I install these sticks into the X99 motherboards. The CPU itself was of course tested with the Turbo Boost Unlock implemented and the voltage was set to minus 70 minus 50 millivolts. My particular sample is stable at minus 90 minus 50 millivolts, but minus 70 minus 50 is a more common configuration, it is a more safe and stable configuration, and I always recommend this voltage to my subscribers, and that's why I have decided to test exactly this configuration. Finally, Core i5-10400 was tested with all power consumption restrictions removed, but the voltage was left on auto. Usually, when I do assemblies for my customers, I apply under volting like minus 50, minus 80, and sometimes even minus 100 millivolts, depends on the CPU quality, but in this testing, I have used stock voltage for the Core i5-10400. Finally, these test results cannot be compared one-to-one -to, -one to the previous results that I have shown on my channel, and this is because first, I am using Windows 11 instead of Windows 10, second, I have added some extra games, for example, Hitman 3 and Rainbow Six Extraction, also many games received new updates and drivers were updated as well, so even though the results might be compared somehow, they are not one-to-one. -one. Oh yeah, I have also used high quality settings in some games instead of the ultimate quality settings, because as I have figured out, the ultimate quality settings are just ridiculous and they are loading GPU without any meaningful extra visual quality added to your gaming process. All in all, I have tested 17 different games, but in this video I am going to cover only 7 of them to save my and your time. But if you're interested to see every graph I have produced and every game I have tested, I'm going to publish my Google Slides presentation and the link will be available in the video description. With this, let's go into the test results and we are starting with ADA64 memory speed test. As expected, Core i5-10400, which has only two memory channels, is not able to match memory read and copy performance to the Xeons, which have four memory channels, but the memory latency with Core i5 is significantly better. If Core i5 is able to deliver only 48 nanoseconds memory latency, latency with the Xeons is staying between 65 and 70 nanoseconds. It is also interesting to see that DDR3 1866 with the slightly better timings is very much comparable to DDR4 2133. Here, if i2667 v2 demonstrates slightly better write performance and slightly better latency, while Xeon if i2690 v3 has significantly better L1 and L2 cache performance. This will indeed affect the gaming performance, but first let's take a look at some synthetic results. Testing CPU-Z, Geekbench 5 and Cinebench R23, as well as V-Ray Benchmark. As we can see, when it comes to the multi-core performance, Xeon i5-2667 V2 and Core i5-10400 are very much the same. Only V-Ray Benchmark believes that Core i5-10400 is significantly better, and this is probably because i5-2667 V2 does not have the modern instructions. But the single core performance, as expected, is the best with Core i5-10400. Xeon i5-2690 V3, on the other hand, is significantly faster than the other two CPUs when all cores are utilized. In rendering workloads such as Blender BMW, Blender Classroom, and Corona Benchmark, we see pretty much the same picture. Core i5-10400 was able to beat i5-2667 V2, and with the classroom scene, the difference is rather significant. i5-2667 V2 completes the scene in 17 minutes, while Core i5 does the job in just 12 minutes. Xeon i5-2690 V3 with 12 cores is even faster, which is not surprising to anybody. 3D Mark, Firestrike, and TimeSpy believe that Xeon i5-2690 V3 is the best CPU. If i2667 V2 and Core i5-10400 are about the same. The old Firestrike benchmark prefers Core i5, while the newer Time Spy believes that both of the CPUs are roughly equal. The first game I'm going to cover is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Even though the game can load multiple CPU cores, it is still very unoptimized and heavily relies on single core performance. Thus, Core i5-10400 takes the first place, 3175 FPS. Xeon i5-2690 V3 is on the second place, 2364 FPS, and i5-2667 V2 takes the last spot, 2257 FPS. 
The difference between 2667 V2 and 10400 is about 20 FPS. I would say it is rather significant. Switching to a much newer Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we see that all three CPUs are delivering almost identical performance. Even though if i2667 V3 is yet again the last one, 7530 FPS, 2690 V3 slightly better, 8632 FPS, and 10400 is the fastest, 9034 FPS, the difference between 2667 V2 and 10400 is just 4 FPS. Rainbow Six Extraction is also a new title, but this one uses Vulkan API. Here the difference between 2667 and Core i5-10400 is also significant, but maybe not as relevant. Xeonify 2667 V2 delivers 176 and 237 FPS. Xeonify 2690 V3 is slightly better, 181 and 248 FPS, while Core i5-10400 is even better, 194 and 271 FPS. Thus, the difference between E5-2667 and Core i5-10400 is more than 30 FPS. DCS World or Digital Combat Simulator This game is rather old, it uses DirectX 11 API, and the minimal FPS is horrible with all three tested CPUs. Thus, I'm going to look only at the average value. With E5-2667 V2, we are getting only 107 FPS on average. E5 2690v3 demonstrates significantly better result, 134 FPS. Core i5 10400 is yet again on the first spot, 142 FPS. The difference between 2667v2 and Core i5 10400 is about 35 FPS, which is rather significant. F1 2021 is a fast pacing game that utilizes many CPU cores, but at the same time it heavily relies on CPU clock frequency, CPU IPC, memory speed and memory latency. Unsurprisingly, if i2667 yet again finds itself on the last spot, 145 and 224 FPS. If i2690 v3 is able to beat this result with 195 and 281 FPS. At the same time, Core i5-10400 is even better, 210-306 FPS. If the difference between 2690v3 and Core i5-10400 is not that significant, then the difference between E5-2667v2 and Core i5-10400 is rather significant and you can feel it while playing the game. Hitman 3. This is another new title which is heavily utilized in CPU. E5-2667 v2 is able to deliver 60 and 169 FPS. E5 2690v3 and Core i5-10400 on average are rendering about 200 FPS, but minimal FPS is significantly better with Core i5. Core i5 is able to keep at least 96 FPS, while with the Xeonify 2690v3 we are dropping to 66 FPS on minimum. Horizon Zero Dawn is the last game I'm going to cover in this video, and yet again E5 2667v2 finds itself on the last spot. 94 and 134 FPS. Xeonify 2690v3 is able to render more than 100 FPS at all times, it delivers 110, 156 FPS. Of course, Core i5-10400 is even better, 124, 173 FPS. Now, if I combine all 17 tested games, we are getting the following picture. Xeonify 2667v2 is capable to deliver 70 and 116 FPS. Xeonify 2690 V3 has much better result, 83 and 138 FPS. Core i5-10400 has even better result, 95 and 153 FPS. So, on average, Xeonify 2667 V2 is about 35 FPS slower than Core i5-10400. But yet again, keep in mind that I was testing with the 1080p screen resolution and the AMD RX 6800 XD graphics card. If you have a graphics card something like GTX 1060 or AMD RX 580, then the difference between E5-2667 V2 and Core i5-10400 will be negligible. Of course, I need to show you the power consumption results, but because three systems are delivering different performance results in productivity and gaming, it is a bit tricky. So, I'm going to demonstrate how much power all three systems are consuming under different loads, but I'm also going to calculate how many points we are getting per watt and how many FPS we are getting per watt. Using all CPU cores with the CPU-Z, V-Ray and Cinebench R23 benchmark, Xeonify 2667v2 system consumes about 155 watts. Under the same benchmarks, Xeonify 2690v3 system consumes about 215 watts. 
and the system with Core i5-10400 consumes only 114 watts. If I calculate how many points I'm getting per watt, then I'm getting the following. With i 2667 v 2 we are getting only 33 points per consumed watt of electricity. With i 2690 v 3 the value is better, we are getting 40 points per watt, and with Core i5-10400 we are getting 52 points per watt. Thus, the power consumption efficiency of Core i5-10400 is almost twice as good as the Xeon i5-2667 v 2 for power consumption under gaming, I have tested three games, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Rainbow Six Extraction, and Hitman 3. Here, the e 2667 v 2 system consumes about 362 watt. Under the same condition, a system with e 2690 v 3 consumes about 385 watts. And the system with Core i5-10400 consumes only 342 watts. Now let's calculate how many FPS we're getting per watt of consumed electricity. With i5-2667, it will be about 0.49 FPS. With i5-2690 v3, it's about 0.5. And with Core i5-10400, it's about 0.57. As you can see, Xeon i5-2667 v2 is the least efficient and Core i5-10400 is the most efficient. But the power consumption difference is not that dramatical. Because under the gaming conditions, your graphics card will be consuming most of the power, the CPU will be just providing load to the graphics card. And what can I say for the conclusion? In my opinion, all these three CPUs are winners here, and let me explain why. Let's start with e 2667 v 2 Even though the CPU is aging and it is not able to compete with the modern Core i5-10400, I still think it is a very great option for people who already have X79 or LGA 2011 motherboards. Also, if you're assembling a gaming computer on a very tight budget, you would want to spend the most of your money on a decent graphics card, and then you're left with basically nothing. In this case, e 2667 with cheap DDR3 memory and cheap X79 motherboard from AliExpress might be the way to go. Of course, you also need to consider X99 plus uh, e 2640v3 and compare the prices as well as motherboard availabilities. Moving on to e 2690 v 3 In games, this CPU is almost matching Core i5-10400, but in productivity it will be significantly faster thanks to its 12 cores and quad memory channel configuration. Also, if you need lots of memory or you need 40 PC Express lanes for your workloads, for example, you are doing some financial calculations or you are doing any source of rendering where you need to connect multiple graphics cards or something like that, then Xeon i5-2690 v3 is the obvious option. Of course, you always need to implement the Turbo Boost Unlock hack and slightly undervolt your CPU to be able to keep that 3.5 GHz on all 12 cores. And finally, Core i5-10400. In my opinion, this is simply the best budget gaming CPU at the moment. After Intel has released its 12th generation CPUs, the price for 10400 is going down. The prices for B560 motherboards are also going down, and sometimes you can find them for less than 100 euros. If you can't find anything for this value, you can always get Maxun B560 and motherboard from AliExpress, and that one costs something like 80-85 euros, and it works perfectly fine with 10400 or 10400F. If you are looking to assemble a gaming computer and you don't really bother about doing some heavy productivity tasks, I would strongly recommend you to pick Core i5-10400 instead of X79 or X99 Xeons. But here is a catch. You need to pick a motherboard which has memory overclocking capabilities such as B560, Z490 or Z590. If you pick B460 or something from the H series, these motherboards do not have memory overclocking options, and then your Core i5 will be limited to DDR4-2666, and with such memory configuration it will perform in games somewhere very close to Xeon i5-2690 v3. And with this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was helpful and interesting, bye bye!